Hey guys, what's up? It's 8 Eric. I am back with a brand new video. The Nintendo Switch is amassing a huge library of video games. More specifically, Nindies. Independent titles that are just popping up left and right. Tons of them. So many that it's actually becoming pretty hard to play them and review them in time. But I'm getting there. Today is going to be one of them. It is Neurovoider, a game that harkens back to the old school arcade style twin stick shooter gameplay mechanic that was popular at one time. Some of these games are very challenging and to add in RPG elements and rogue-like elements just brings it up a notch. Is Neurovoider something that commands that type of praise? Let's go ahead and check out that game today in today's review. And if you already started the video and you're not subscribed, why don't you go ahead and hit that sub button. Let's begin the video. So Neurovoider came out a couple weeks ago on the Nintendo Switch and upon first impression I thought it looked insane. You play as a brain who escapes his test tube and you're introduced to a robot that kind of gives you a quick little tutorial on how to use your certain weapons and skill sets. Basically you, you're a brain inside of a mech and you blast the hell out of anything that moves. You're like a pissed off brain that wants to kill all these robots throughout these locations and you travel from point to point destroying these reactors. Yes, in order to complete these levels you gotta find a certain number of reactors destroy them and get the hell out before you die because the roguelike element is once you die to permit death if you're on the last stage the second to last stage and you die you're starting over on square one you don't take anything with you and there's a lot of things with neurovoider i was actually initially overwhelmed there's a lot of options when it comes to upgrading your brain robot am i going to call it that but i'm getting ahead of myself Back to the core gameplay, it's a twin stick arcade like shooter, you control your mech an above the view, kind of like Smash TV and all these other games that are coming out, you transverse this map, each level is procedurally generated and you have to look for the reactors, you use the left stick to move your robot, the right stick to aim, and then you have your weapons on the left and right shoulders. In addition to that, your robot is able to have two skills one that you select before the game starts and one that you pick afterwards as you defeat enemies in the stage which there are a ton and there's a variety of enemies they're all kind of robot wacky some small little i guess roach like robots that don't do too much harm and then you'll run into some crazy big ones that'll just throw a whole bevy of bullets your way some of these drop items that in between the stages you're able to put on your robot to make new upgrades new transports new visors new types of stuff to upgrade your robot skills. Now there's three different robot sets that you can have. A Dash, a Fortress, and Rampage. Depending on which one you pick is depending on what kind of abilities your robots have. The Dash are the faster ones. Rampage, of course, obviously go in and blow the hell out of everything. And Fortress are a little bit tougher than the other ones, but slower. Your first three initial upgrades dedicated towards the type of robot that you have. So you're gonna be picking up useless upgrades, but don't worry, you're able to scrap these in order to, I guess, build up upgrades towards your other ones. Once you're able to scrap, you're able to boost your existing components to repair yourself or just totally upgrade your mech. There is a lot of stuff and they have a lot of funny names too. There's like lubricant, beam of lubricant and stuff like that. Lots of options. If you're into this type of stuff, it's going to be fun. This is where the RPG fans might really enjoy this stuff. If you're still new to stuff like this, like myself, it might be a little bit overwhelming at first. Now, weapon selection, there are a ton of weapons as well. It's not as robust as the upgrading for your skills, like your visors and all that. So it's a little bit more understandable for us less intelligent roguelike people. But it's cool. Overall, the game does have that old school style gameplay that I like. You know, the retro shoot 'em up type of environment it's crazy it's hectic overall the presentation of this game is such a joy to look at it has that gritty 16-bit generation sega genesis 
weird style with brains and robots and lasers and stuff exploding everywhere. It's complete chaos. It's easy to get lost on what's going on on the screen because so many sprites could show up, but at never one point did I think the game wasn't performing well. It plays beautifully both docked and undocked. No frame rate issues at all. The sound, especially the soundtrack, has this 80s dark futuristic tone to it that just pumps you up. The control is spot on. It is smooth as a baby's butt. There's no gripes as far as how this game plays and performs. The controls, once you get used to it and you figure out how to play this game, you're going to be owning it. I mean, sure, you're going to die a lot, but you're going to be playing this game like a champ guarantee you and it has a lot of replayability because when you die you always want to get that one more go in not to mention this game features one of the best aspects of the nintendo switch the idea of being able to pick up and play anytime anywhere with friends yes local couch co-op is a main selling point of this game. You can play Newer Voter with local co-op for up to four people. The more you play, the merrier, because it does get a little chaotic, but the game is not bad by itself. I know a lot of people have concerns with these multiplayer games where you play alone. It gets kind of uh, lost in translation. Newer Voter is a very good game to play by yourself. And what's perfect about this, of course, and I always go back to it on the Nintendo Switch, is the pick up and play anywhere that you can play this game this is the perfect pick the game up and play it for a quick session when you're waiting at the doctor's office or you got some kind of boring meeting or something like that and you want to risk getting fired after you upgrade between the levels you're actually able to pick which path you want to go out of three depending on how much elite enemies they are loot there is and size there is in the stages to how big hard and i guess reward giving the level is yes depending on the elites which is how many difficult robots you're going to have the loot which is how much stuff you can pick up completing the stage and the size is how hard your levels are so you're kind of able to pick and choose once in a while you'll see a metaverse which is kind of like a crazy bonus area where the risk is greater than anything else but the reward is just as great so there's a lot of you know i guess replayability as far as how you could go about your game. You're never gonna play the same game twice. It's procedurally generated, like I said. Sure, you might see some templates and enemy repetition. The game might get old after an hour or so of playing, but that's why you could play with friends or you could play this in short moments so you don't get too sick of it. Me personally, I really enjoyed Nero Voider. I think it's a great game. I'm into stuff like this. Challenging arcade style, short, you know, try to do as best as you can within a certain time limit game. I know a lot of people look for a single player narrative experience. This is not there. There's not much as far as story goes other than the opening tutorial. It literally just throws you out there into the combat to figure it out on yourself. So Neuro Voider, I'm going to go ahead and give it a eight bit Eric out of 10. So an eight out of 10. I highly recommend it. And guys, thanks a lot for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you next video. Peace out.